Hey there, everyone. How's it going? Uh, it's Father Thomas Quinas Pickett here at Blessed Sacrament Parish in Seattle. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, hope you got your Friday in Lent is, is very fruitful uh, with your, your abstinence, your fasting, and other forms of penance you're taking on. Hopefully it's great. Um, you know, we're, we're all kind of doing our part to uh, you know, stay away from other people, so I decided I'd share a little bit of my life with you and one of my hobbies. Uh, we've made a couple other videos of, you know, where I talk about very nerdy things. So today we're going to do something that's not as nerdy, it's more crafty. And I'm going to show you my, my kombucha brewing <laughs> uh, setup. Um, let me know uh, really quickly if you can comment, if you can hear me, if you can see me very well. I, I know we have with this fridge in the back here that's kind of running, so I don't know you know, is, is the sound okay? You know, just shoot me a quick comment. Um, yeah. If you're watching, give me a comment. Can you hear me? Ah, I don't know yet. Um, anyway, well, I'll, I'll scooch, scooch this over a little bit so you can see my setup here. This is my kombucha setup. So here we have the, uh, the kombucha that I've been brewing for the last maybe a month or so. Um, ah, thank you, Jay Balza. Yes, loud and clear. Good, you can hear me. Um, here's the kombucha I've been brewing. It's been, it's been setting. Uh, I, I don't really have kind of a Space, space is precious in the Priory. So where have I been brewing this? This has been brewing under my bed. Uh, it's nice on one hand because I always know it's, it's close, close by. I can keep an eye on it. The bad sign, the bad thing about it is that uh, occasionally kombucha can be a little smelly. Um, so there have been definite, definite times when the, 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 the uh, smell of the kombucha has been a little more pungent than normal. So for example, take the lid off of this. See there's, maybe there's this, you can kind of see this top layer. And this is the SCOBY, the new SCOBY that was formed. SCOBY, a SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Community of Bacteria and Yeast. So you know, all the little critters in here eating all the sugar in the tea. And you can't really tell from this angle, but it's a little bulbous right now. It's kind of bulging a little bit. That's because there's some gas <laughs> stuck underneath. So I'm going to poke my finger in here and release some gas. This is called burping the kombucha. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Pungent. Very vinegary. Just the way I like it. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to take the new kombucha that I've been brewing, we're going to put it in the bottles. So I'll put these over here really quick. Feel free if you want to ask me any questions as we go along. Just uh, doesn't even have to be about kombucha. You can ask me about, about anything. We're, uh, we're in this together. So, um, first, first thing, I'm, I'm going to take my watch off because I'm going to be getting my hands in this jar of, jar of kombucha and I don't want a whole bunch of uh, like grimy watch germs to get in. So I'm going to wash my hands over in the sink really quick without, without bacterial soap, uh, antibacterial soap. <laughs> Uh, because I don't want to kill the, the bacteria and the SCOBY. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the, the SCOBY in just a little container for now, along with some extra bit of juice, uh, some leftover kombucha juice, so that when I make a new batch, I'll have kind of a starter starter set to get uh, to go off of. Oh man! 
Oh, that's a big one. Oh, okay. So if you've never seen a SCOBY before, that's what it looks like, okay? And it's, it's pretty nasty looking, but that's the way I like it. And, oh man, feels like, I mean, I imagine this is what a jellyfish feels like. And I'm gonna pour a little extra juice, juice in here. Make it happy. So yeah, we've got some several scobies in here. I like to keep a couple of them in each jar at the same time. Uh, yes, yes, Aaron, it does look like a sea creature. It, it's, it, it, it really does. It's like a jellyfish, I think, or a sea cucumber. So now I'm gonna, all I gotta do is basically pour, I have a little funnel here with a strainer. I'm gonna pour the kombucha into each bottle. Mm. It smells vinegary. So how's your day going? I, I, I kind of assume that if you're watching me at noon making kombucha, you probably don't have anything uh, better to do. So what what are you up what are you up to today? Go ahead and comment below. It looks like John Buck just poured himself a glass of apple cider vinegar cut with water. Very good. That's um, I don't know if uh, John, if you've if you've uh, had kombucha before, but there's kind of definitely a vinegary, you know, taste here. Uh, David Burns working from home. Aaron's about to do some fr fresh baking. Uh, do the fryers want any fresh baked bread? Aaron, is that even a question? <laughs> uh, Ellen's reading. Are we in the Summa? Good for you, Ellen. Stay nerdy, okay? And are, are any of you watching uh, any kombucha brewers also? Um, so I'll, I'll give you a little close up here. Um, that's kind of what the what the product looks like. That's a nice color right now, kind of golden color. It, it reminds me kind of, of like a, a wheat beer, kind of like a Hefeweizen or something, something like that. Um, definitely very good color. I like that. Kind of a vinegary, vinegary scent uh, to it. I kind of I kind of dig. One of the things I like about kombucha is kind of the acidity. It gives a little, a little kind of tartness, makes you pucker a little bit. Mm. 
I'm just trying to even it out here. It looks like some might be a little more full than others. That's okay. I'm, I'm going to get a glass. I'm, I'm just, just going to drink some, if you don't mind. Okay, so here we go. This is uh, this is batch. I don't know. This maybe like maybe dozen the dozen maybe more dozen or so time I've ever kombucha. So each time is a little different. I I think that's kind of nifty. Um, uh, sometimes it's a lot more pungent. Sometimes it's very kind of mild flavored. Sometimes it's very tart with no flavor, and sometimes it's tart with a lot of flavor. So it's very interesting. So we'll see how this one is. Oh yeah, that's tart. That's a little bit of a burn. Yeah, this is pretty good. Ah, nice. All right, well, I'm gonna pour the rest into the bowl with the other SCOBY, just to keep them happy. Let me just give this one a little more. Okay. All right. Yeah, now from this stage, um, I don't know if you can see. So I got I got all the kombucha in bottles, and at this at this step, you can either do one or two things. The first thing is that you can just simply just drink them as they are. You know, um, I, I like them kind of put them in the fridge. Now kind of calm down the the scoby activity for a bit, so you can just start drinking it. Uh, another thing you can do at this stage is add a little more sugar and also some like fruit or something like that. You put fruit in it or some you know herb or something like that to give it a little flavor. And then that uh that that will give you another couple I mean you have to wait a few more days and then you'll be able to drink it and have flavor. I've done a few flavors before. Uh I did a uh I did a oh yeah I did a, a kind of this little orange that came from an orange tree that St. Dominic planted in Santa Sabina in Rome. I took, I, I had some of those oranges and so I made kombucha with it. And in a couple of them, I added some fresh vanilla. That was a great one, it was like a creamsicle. Well, a very tart creamsicle. Uh, I've also done chili pepper, uh, which is kind of nice. Not a, not a hot pepper, but just kind of a, a, like a red pepper or a little sweet pepper. No, that was very good. Actually, gave it a kind of cool smoky flavor. I've done also uh, some blueberry when it was last when it was last uh, summer. Well, you know, kind of the berry season. I had a lot of berries, and that was pretty nice. But today, I'm just going to do a simple, simple flavor, non-flavored kombucha. It has a lot of flavor, but I'm just not going to add any flavor to it. It's as good as it is. So if, uh, if any of you are, are kombucha drinkers, like what are some of your favorite uh, flavors? Go ahead and maybe comment below. Like what's your, what's your go-to favorite flavor of kombucha? Um, and it, it can either be you make your own or it can be kind of a store-bought one. What are, your favorite, what are some of your favorite uh, kombucha flavors? And if you share, then I'll share. So uh, at this point, uh, we're going to start getting ready to, to make the next batch. And in order to do that, I'm first going to boil some water. 
And then once it's boiled, I'll add some tea. Well, and one, then I'll let the tea set for a bit. Once the tea is set, I'll add sugar to it. Uh, I'll put that uh, sugar tea water, like a sweet tea, basically into the big jar again. Then I'll add the add more water, and I'll add the scobies again. And from that, and then I'll cover it. And from that, we'll be able to make a whole new batch of of, of, of kombucha. So it's basically kind of a self-perpetuating process, which is pretty nifty. Uh, and in a little bit, I'll, I'll show you my SCOBY hotel. Yes, there is such a thing as a SCOBY hotel, and I'll show you what that is. But uh, so I'm going to start boiling some water here at our stove. Uh, but go ahead and let me know what's your favorite kombucha flavor, or uh, what's a, uh, or even what's your least favorite. You know, sometimes. Sometimes people have really strong negative uh, preferences. Anyway, so I'm gonna start boiling some water here on the stove. Now I kind of I, I kind of know what it feels like now to be on like the Food Network. This is this is kind of weird. Normally, this is something I just do by do by myself. Um, but now I have to kind of talk to you also, which is kind of nice. So go ahead, you know, I mean, I don't want to just ramble the entire time. If you have any questions or comments, shoot them out and we can talk about that. We got some uh, water waiting to boil. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna rinse out the, the empty jar. Let that sit in the sink. But I tell you, it's been so nice having having sun back in Seattle. We had that, we had like we had like that streak streak of three months or something like that, where it's just like gray and rainy all the time. It's pretty incredible. It makes a big difference. Um, I actually uh, every morning, just part of my routine is like uh, first thing I do in the morning, wake up, make the sign of the cross, offer my day to God. Then I go and turn on, I have like a little happy light, you know, like a little kind of it mimics sunlight kind of thing. I, I turn that on, look at it for a second, go downstairs, get some coffee, come back upstairs, then I'll do about half an hour of scripture reading with my coffee and my, my happy light, you know, kind of wake up. And then I'll, after that, I'll do another half hour of just more kind of academic study. Um, so I'm working through a couple of books right now, and that's, that's kind of a good time to do it. Uh, and then by by the time after an hour and a half, then it's time for like mass and prayer and stuff like that. So, but I typically start the day with that, you know, kind of fake sunlight, uh, just to uh, make sure I'm fully awake and uh, avoid like seasonal dis affective disorder, which is a real thing. When when I, uh, um, uh, when I when I lived in I, I lived a year in Anchorage, Alaska, and it wasn't really the cold that bothered me because I, I grew up in Ellensburg, Washington, which has plenty of snow and gets cold during the winter. But it was the darkness that was really surprising was was how much the the light affects you, and um, yeah. So I, I I remember the first time I tried a happy light. I got it, I, I sat down in my room, I turned it on, and instantly, it was like my eyes had literally been like dry or like thirsty or hungry or something like that, and right then when I turned that line on, it was like I was, I was feeding my eyes. It's pretty incredible. Um, yeah, so I, I'm a, a big fan of using happy lights. All right, uh, my jar's almost rinsed out, be right back. Also, like to rinse stuff out with a little bit of vinegar. One thing you have to be careful about with, with kombucha is that you can't use various kinds of soaps because you don't want to kill the bacteria and the yeast. So you have to be kind of careful with how you clean things.
So water is almost boiling. Once the water is boiling, I'm just going to throw in a whole bunch of tea bags. I have a, I have a potpourri, a kind of a hodgepodge, a mili melo of various green and black teas. Um, sometimes when, I, when I'm feeling really kind of uh, adventurous, I'll put yerba mate in also. Give it a little extra kind of caffeine kick. Oh, yeah. Caffeine and grace, I'll tell you. Good stuff. Okay, so jars clean. All right, so water's boiling over here. So. So I, I know on the Food Network sometimes, uh, sometimes the the various cooks have like a catchphrase, like when they when they do something. I think that one guy Merle, he says like panda or something like that. So I'm gonna do that. Ready? Panda. Or is it bam? I think it's bam. 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 Okay, I'm just gonna put them all in. And uh, tamp them down. Okay. Now, go ahead and my handy dandy cheat sheet. I have to let the tea set in here for five to seven minutes. So we have five to seven minutes. Uh, of waiting here. So, what do you want to talk about for five to seven minutes? Hit me up with a comment, let me know. Yeah. Yeah, five to seven minutes. Uh, I think we're like 30, 30 seconds into this. We can make it. Uh, I can show you in the meantime. Um, I, I'll show you my SCOBY hotel. Okay. Hold on one second. So I'm particularly proud of this, this bad boy. Okay. This is a jar full of scobies, okay? Like a lot of them. I don't know if, I don't know if you can necessarily see all the, they look like pancakes, but they're not pancakes. Uh, these are scobies. Um, and basically you can keep them, if you keep them in a kind of a jar full of sugar water and, and tea, they'll, they'll stay happy and this one's uh, just keep it at room temperature. Oh, I forgot. forgot. One more tea bag. So the, the, the next step uh, coming up is going to be adding, uh, taking, taking out the tea bags and then adding a cup of sugar to kind of make it sweet. So you can watch me put sugar in a cup. Let's see. I'm just starting to get a little low, low on sugar. Okay. 
that looks good enough. I'm gonna put put the measuring cup precariously close to the edge. Just keep you in suspense. Show your way. Now, so five, seven minutes. And how you guys been uh, holding up throughout all of this? Um, you know, for some of you, you know, working working from home or not even having a job anymore, that's it's, it's, that's a rough that's a rough transition. But also, a lot of you who are working. You know, you're probably dealing with a lot more fear, a lot more anxiety. So I think everyone just all around, you know, it's a pretty wild situation. Um, but like I, I said in my video yesterday, I think one of the things that this, this kind of pandemic, this crisis pres uh, presents to us is an occasion to do some really important moral work, um, especially when people find themselves, you know, alone. Uh, you know, if they're, and especially if they're bored, you know, that's, that's a, that's a prime time for a lot of temptations to come in. So, uh, this is a great opportunity for people to really do some good self work. Uh, but also people who are working still in the midst of all the kind of the, the dangers and, um, kind of the fear, you know, that's, that's a time for real bravery to, to take hold. So I, I think overall, I mean, <clears throat> This this pandemic is a is a good occasion for us all to grow. You know, I, I think a, a challenge for us is to to leave to leave this time period as a morally better person than than uh, who we were when it started. Uh, and that's that's the kind of attitude that I'm taking to this. So I, I'm I've been reflecting a lot about well, how can I grow? You know, especially how, how can I grow in charity? How can I? Um, you know, how can I be more patient, especially? And also, how can I do a better job of trying to reach out to people? Um, so those, those are some of the things I'm thinking about. All right, well, I think I think we're almost done here with uh, letting the tea sit. So. So I'm just gonna scoop out these tea bags. Uh, have to get something else to cook. I just like to make sure that I get all the liquid out. So I kind of press the tea bags, get all the actual little tea juice in the can. If you're a if you're a kombucha brewer, what kind of teas do you typically use? I mean, I've tried fancy stuff, I've tried just regular stuff, but I mean, I can't really tell too much of a difference. I don't know, what's your experience? Oh, yeah. I didn't see all these extra comments. Oh, Claire Shea. Pomegranate blueberry? That does sound really good. Uh, John Buck, yeah, the, brand, the, the brew doctor, ginger turmeric. It's excellent. Guava. Guava flavored. Ellen likes with blueberries. Claire, I feel like peach would be delish too. 
I could definitely see that. I think the kind of the gentleness of peach would blend well with kind of the tartness. When did I get into kombucha, kombucha brewing? Uh, David Byrne asks. Um, I, I would say I got into it maybe a year ago, I think, year, year and a half ago. It was a little bit after I got to Seattle and um, occasionally, you know, we would get some kombucha at the Priory and I've, I've always liked kombucha. And then I, 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 I started thinking, well, you know, gosh darn it, you know, if I can just make this myself, why not do that, you know? Uh, so I, I, I tried it and I, I thought it was pretty easy and it tasted good, so I, I, I liked that. There is one story though that kind of it put it a little more into my mind to start making kombucha was that when I was a student brother, one time I was up in, um, I was up in Portland, I guess I'm in Seattle, so it was down in Portland. I was down in Portland um, to help out with a Dominican Rite Mass. I think it was being the subdeacon for something and uh, for a solemn high mass. And we, some of the friars went to dinner at a family's house. I can't remember the, who the family was, but the, the mom made this, like she had a big vat of kombucha in her closet. And she let me taste some of it and it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It was, it was really like apple. It was like apple, apple vinegar cider. It was amazing. I never tasted kombucha that flavorful before. <laughs> so it definitely made me interested. Um, bam. Yeah. Um, John Bucks, the oh, reading the Noonday Devil. Yeah. It's a good one. Uh, yeah. yeah, John Buck. That, uh, so the Noonday Devil. That's that's a that's a that's a that's great work. Vance, I was told not to use herbal teas. If I try them any most, I was told to stick with black. Yeah, I the uh, Vance. Uh, one thing I, I've read is that you don't want to use teas with like oils in them or something, or different, like artificial flavors, or you know, because it's evidently hard for the the scoby to uh to digest or whatever they do. Um, I'm gonna hurry up here. But I, I really do, when, when I, I, I made kombucha with, with mate mixed in with the tea, and I, I thought that added a nice kind of smoky flavor to it. And I'm going to add the sugar, which has been poised precariously on the edge. Bam! Now, I will tell you that brewing kombucha during the winter here, or kind of spring and fall, is a lot better than it is in the summer because uh, the priory has a bit of an ant problem. So whenever any sugar gets out, um, you can bet that there's going to be a trail of ants getting in. The building, the, the, the priory, I, I love the priory. It's a little old, a little rickety, um, but it has its character. I think ants are a part of that. But I feel yeah, They've yet to make a comeback, so I spilled some sugar here, but I think I'll, I'll try to wipe it up later. I don't think the ants are coming. Um, good. So, what we're going to do next is I'm going to I'm going to put the uh, the sweet tea mixture into the jar, and then. Uh, I'm going to add some more water to it to kind of, um, I don't know, fill it up. <laughs> uh, then I'm going to put the scobies in. And kind of the, it's, I, I imagine for a scoby getting put back into uh, a warm jar of tea, it's kind of like getting into a hot tub. 
So we can just, we can all imagine the, the joy, all that bacteria and yeast feels, they slide in to the hot tub of tea that I'm lovingly preparing for them. Oh, yeah, good. Okay, here we go. Now this part I suck at. I, 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 I've yet to find a way of pouring something from a pot into the jar without having it spill all, all over the place. You know how it just like, you know, like, like dribble down the edge? Like how, how do you avoid that? It's like scientifically impossible, right? Um, I'm even spilling right now. So I just I just washed one of my habits. So if I if I get it all over myself, don't worry. I'll just will just change. Um, how, I don't know. You, you watch. You watch. And you, you see what happens. Okay. I, I just, I've been told if you just do it quickly, none will spill. But if you do it quickly, you're going to spill because you're doing it quickly. I don't know. It's, catch, it's a catch 22, right? Ready? Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. You saw that, right? That, that was the best pour I've ever done with this pot. <laughs> oh man. Things are looking up. The world may be falling to pieces, but things, things are looking good. Okay, All right, I'm gonna add eight cups of water. Wow, I, it's little things in life. Yep. Yeah, perfecto. Thank you, Vance. That was amazing. Now, according according to science, I have to wait until the jar is between 68 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit before adding the SCOBY. Um, and I have this little, I have a little strip thermometer on the side and it says basically 78. So I think we're good to go. I can just put the SCOBYs in. Uh, so we'll, I'll, I'll bring it a little closer so you can see, see this magic. I, I like to put a couple scobies in, like I said. Um, I don't. I, I think it just kind of it helps build community. So, oh yeah. By the way, uh, scoby symbiotic community of bacteria and yeast. I learned that it's called a community and not a colony because a colony implies uniformity of species or something like that. Whereas a community has more diverse, so you know, here, here in the kitchen of Blasted Sacrament Priory, we are champions of diversity. Okay, here we go. Oh man. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, that's some, that's some slimy stuff. Oh, here's, here's the new one that formed. Oh, that one in. This was the new guy that was, that was formed. And you can see he's got some funny bubbles. Um, I don't know. Maybe we should name this one. What do you think we should name it? Bubbles. <laughs> I 
guy in here. Get in there. Nice. Now, it's almost pretty full, so I'm just going to put a little bit of the juice, leftover juice. Ah, I'm spilling. That's good enough. Now, it looks really full because it is. Uh, but luckily, it'll over time it'll go down a little bit. I th I think a little bit of a a little bit of it evaporates or something. Um, I'm gonna really quickly wash my hands off. Okay, I'll move you guys back. <laughs> A ratio of SCOBY to tea sugar hot tub. I don't know what the ratio is. That's a good question, Vance. I, 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 I don't have a clear answer for you. Um, I just follow. I originally got one of my original SCOBYs had gotten in the kit, and the kit came with brewing instructions. So I just follow this. It says so four cups of water with tea and then a cup of sugar. And then you put it in the jar, add eight cups of water. So I don't know what, like one cup of sugar per 12 cups of water. So one twelfth, like, I, I don't know. I'm not a math person. So the final step is basically, I'm gonna cover it up, I got this nice kind of cloth. Got a little banner at it. Then I'm going to bring it up to my room. My room, I have a little, uh, it's kind of heat wraps that go around the, the jar, kind of keep it, a, uh, keep it at a consistent temperature. Um, yeah, so that was basically it. That was, that was making kombucha. So, uh, yeah, that just took 43 minutes. Uh, of course, I think so, it would have been shorter if I hadn't been blathering so much. Uh, but thank you for putting up with my blathering. Um, all right, so I think that's basically it. Um, hope you guys have a good day. Uh, I'm going to, going to bring this up to my room. Then a little bit, we're going to get ready for our, our midday prayer here at the Priory. So we do alert to the hours. We do midday prayer together. And then I think, uh, one of our parishioners is bringing over, a meal for us, which is pretty nice. Um, um, there, there's some very, very, very good, very generous uh, parishioners who, who help uh, donate meals to us because we're not, uh, we don't, we don't have like a cook or anything. And um, uh, I, I don't think you, the, the brothers, would appreciate uh, another brother trying to cook <laughs> because we're not. Yeah, I mean, Dominicans, we're not crafty people. I mean, except for kombucha. I can make kombucha. Other kinds of food, no way. Um, anyway, so I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a, a, a very fruitful Friday um, and that you can draw close to the Lord. Um, I believe tonight at the parish there is time for confession, I think from 8 to 9. There's also all, all night adoration. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that uh, – you know, we, we have to keep in mind the, the kind of restriction on numbers of people being able to come to the church. And so if you come to the church and, and it looks like there's quite a few people, you might wait outside for a little bit, you know, uh, let people go out uh, because we don't want to violate the, uh, the restriction on how many people can be in a, in a certain space at a time. And I'll be in the confessional. I Being in the confessional, I'll tell you this, I, I was I, it's kind of... Uh, we, we instead of having everybody kneel and put their hands on kind of that little kind of the kneeler thing, what we're doing is we're putting chairs in the confessional, so it minimizes the thing that people have to touch, and also so that people don't are constantly breathing through the screen at me, you know, and so I'm not when I'm talking, I'm not breathing through the screen at them, you know. And I also have, I have I have a little portable USB charged fan that I'm bringing into my into the into the box with me in the confessional. So um, uh, 
So I don't know, no, hopefully fresh air gets in or something like that. But that's something I think that we need to figure out a little bit better how to do is hearing confession during this time. Because I, uh, I don't think, you know, if you're supposed to stay like six feet away from people, it's kind of awkward to have a confession. I murdered someone. What? I murdered someone. You know, or something like that. Yeah, it, it's a little awkward. Anyway, I'm rambling. I got to get these bad boys up into their uh, their uh, their new home under, under my bed, <laughs> basically. So stay awesome. Stay healthy. Keep praying. God bless you all for, for putting up with my, my blathering. God bless you. See ya.